Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral scientist based in Vienna, Austria. In this video, I test the heart rate accuracy of the Fitbit Charge 4, which is Fitbit's flagship fitness tracker. I do this by comparing it against the Polar H10 chest strap for over 150 training sessions. I chose the Polar H10 chest strap as a reference since it's considered one of the most accurate consumer devices available for heart rate tracking. What makes this test especially interesting is the heart rate monitoring problems I and others have observed with the Fitbit Sense, which is Fitbit's latest smartwatch. Fitbit introduced the Pure Pulse 2.0 technology with the Fitbit Sense, which is supposed to measure your heart rate in more ways and more places, thereby making it more accurate. But this didn't exactly work out for me. The question is, does the established technology of the Fitbit Charge 4 actually result in a more reliable heart rate measurement? As always, I don't want to waste your time, so timestamps are in the description below and also on the timeline. The Fitbit Charge 4 was my main health and fitness tracker for several months, which means I collected a lot of data. I collected my heart rate with both the Polar H10 chest strap and the Fitbit Charge 4 for over 150 training sessions. Additionally, I own two Fitbit Charge 4 units and I tested both to make sure that results were consistent for both devices. Now the reason I own two devices is that one of my Fitbit Charge 4s has some problems syncing and Fitbit sent me a replacement. Anyhow, enough talking, let's dive straight into the results. Here I've plotted the results for all training sessions combined, with along the horizontal axis my heart rate according to the Polar H10 chest strap, and along the vertical axis my heart rate according to the Fitbit Charge 4. Each heart rate measurement is indicated by a small transparent circle. I had so many measurements that I had to make the circles very transparent, because otherwise it would just be a single black blob here. So if we just have a single measurement here, it will be very hard to see. But the more heart rate measurements there are in a certain area of this plot, the darker the color. So you can see it's almost black along this blue line. And this blue line indicates where the Fitbit Charge 4 and the Polar H10 agree perfectly. So that's a good indication. So we can see one nice black blob here along a high heart rate, which is probably when I was doing spinning. And we can see one blob here for the medium heart rates, which is probably when I was doing weightlifting. Now there's also a red line here. Now if there's a point along this red line, it means that the Fitbit Charge 4 detected about half the heart rate that it should be. So half the heart rate that the Polar H10 detected. Now I put this here because if the data quality is not so good, some algorithms detect about half the heart rate of what it should be. So these heart rate measurements here were not done correctly and it appears to stop at about half the heart rate. So this seems to be sort of a natural barrier for how wrong the heart rate can be. And this is better than what we've seen for some other devices, which I'll talk about in a minute. But first I wanna look at some example training sessions where I plot my heart rate over time for both the Fitbit Charge 4 and the Polar H10 to see if there are any consistent mistakes that the Fitbit Charge 4 makes. Here I've plotted such an example. On the horizontal axis we have the time and on the vertical axis we have the heart rate. In red we have my heart rate according to the Fitbit and in blue my heart rate according to the Polar H10. I actually plotted all 150 training sessions and I chose some representative examples to show you here. Now here the Fitbit did really well. You can see that the Fitbit overlaps almost perfectly with the Polar H10. Only this small spike in heart rate here and here and this small delay in heart rate increase here, but overall it agrees very well. And there are more examples like this. For instance, this indoor training session, so a spinning session, and this one as well. But I did discover some errors that frequently popped up for the Fitbit. One thing that I quite often saw in the comparison between the Fitbit and the Polar H10 is a sudden drop in heart rate for the Fitbit, which then quickly goes to the right level again. And we see two examples of that here. But we see it in other plots too. For instance, here, 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 and here, we see this drop as well. And we can also see it here at the beginning of the training session, there are quite often some drops. Another thing I often saw go wrong is what you see here. 
Now I often divide my spinning sessions into three or four parts where there are breaks in between. So my heart rate will drop for a while and go up again and drop again and go up again and so on. Often at the beginning of my training, the Fitbit had some trouble getting to the right heart rate level. But then if it dropped or raised after, it would follow fine. So that's also what you see here in this plot. It has some trouble mainly in the beginning, but afterwards is much better. And I have more examples like that, where it's specifically in the beginning of my training, not performing that well. Now I don't know if this is due to the algorithm or me sweating a bit more later, which maybe makes it easier for the Fitbit to detect my heart rate. I'm not sure, but it's very often at the beginning of my training only. Now I showed you some of these sudden drops in heart rate before, and there are even more severe examples. So here we see some examples where again, we have these drops in heart rate and they're even stronger and more consistent as before. And there are more training sessions like that, where we also have the combination of a lag in the beginning and then some drops during the workout. Now, finally, there were a few training sessions, but not that many where the Fitbit did really a bit worse. So we can see here, for instance, that there's just much less of an agreement between the Fitbit and the Polar H10. Again, a bit worse in the beginning than at the end, but also here at the end, you can see there are more spikes and drops that don't really match. So maybe the fit of my Fitbit around my wrist was just a bit worse for that session. And here again, we have a training session where especially at the beginning, it just doesn't do so well. At the end, it does a lot better. Let's take a quick look at weightlifting. Of course, my heart rate is lower during weightlifting, but there are also more quick rises and falls in my heart rate. So let's take a look. Again, in blue, we have the Polar H10 and in red, the Fitbit. And as you can see, this is a typical example. The Fitbit does okay. It lags a bit behind the rise in heart rate, but it is able to detect each set I did during weightlifting and shows a heart rate for each of those. And there are more examples like that. The Fitbit lags behind a bit and it doesn't go to the same height of heart rate, but at least it's able to detect each set that I did. And these results are more or less consistent for all weight training sessions. As I mentioned, I also own a second Fitbit Charge 4, which for the tests I wore on my other arm. Let's have a look if this gives similar results. As you can see, the results pretty much agree with what we saw before. Now there are fewer training sessions here, so the points are a bit less transparent, but overall you see most points lie along the blue line, similar to what we saw before for the other Fitbit Charge 4 unit I own. Here we can also take a look at the individual training sessions. Here we have another spinning session and again there's super nice agreement between the Fitbit and the Polar H10. And looking at other spinning sessions we have the same result here and here. We do also for this unit see some of these sudden drops in heart rate but overall I would say the performance is pretty good. And also for weightlifting we see similar behavior where it doesn't completely catch up to the peak in my heart rate but overall the performance is similar to what we saw before. Now, as I showed you in a previous video on the Fitbit Sense, this latest smartwatch from Fitbit suffers from quite some problems when it comes to heart rate monitoring, at least with the firmware version they had at the time. Let's see how the heart rate monitoring of the Fitbit Sense compares to that of the Fitbit Charge 4 when we put them side by side. On the left here, we see the plot I showed you before of the Fitbit Charge 4, and on the right, we see a similar plot for the Fitbit Sense. Now at a first glance they might seem somewhat similar, but the main problem that the sense showed were these patches of low heart rate here and especially here, where you can clearly see almost all the points are below the blue line, meaning that the Fitbit sense detected a lower heart rate than what I had in reality according to the Polar H10. And here I want to show you what it actually is. So I tried to pick two representative samples for the Fitbit Charge 4 on the right and the Fitbit Sense on the left. And as I showed you for the Fitbit Charge 4, it generally agrees pretty well with some sudden drops in there sometimes, but the Fitbit Sense had a more serious problem. It almost always lags behind the actual heart rate for each of these different parts of the training session, and quite often it didn't even reach the correct heart rate. Now the Fitbit Charge 4 performed much better in this regard. In addition to the Fitbit Sense, over the last few months, I've tested several new smartwatches and fitness trackers for their heart rate accuracy. So let's see how the Fitbit Charge 4 compares to these. Here you can see the heart rate accuracy for six different devices that I tested. Now I'm not gonna go into detail for each of them because I made a video for each of them, so check those out if you wanna know more. But overall, it does give you an impression of how good the Fitbit Charge 4 performs compared to each of these. Overall, I would say it does pretty well and it's definitely in the top half. Now the Apple Watch performs best by far because all measurements are along this blue line here. 
The Huawei watch fit also performed pretty well. We also see most points are along this axis. And I would say that the Huawei watch fit and the Fitbit Charge 4 perform about as well. Maybe the Huawei watch fit performs a little bit better than the Fitbit Charge 4, but the picture is a little bit distorted just because I have so many more measurements for the Fitbit Charge 4. So there are bound to be some points that are not along this axis. But for me, the Fitbit Charge 4 definitely performs better than the Garmin Venue SQ, the Withing ScanWatch and the Fitbit Sense. Based on all this heart rate data, I would say that the Fitbit Charge 4 performed reasonably well when it comes to heart rate monitoring. As I showed you, there are some minor issues, like it sometimes has this lag at the beginning of your training in the heart rate, and there are these short drops in heart rate in the middle of your training, but overall these are relatively minor and will not affect your general impression of your training session. So would I recommend the purchase of the Charge 4 based on these and other tests that I've done? In short, I would say yes. Fitbits also have good sleep tracking for smartwatches as I've shown you in previous videos. These are linked above. I have found that the Fitbit Charge 4 is pretty accurate in most things, except for maybe step counting. And you can usually get a Fitbit Charge 4 for a reasonable price nowadays. This is why for the last few years, I've used Fitbits as my main way of tracking my health and my fitness. The main downside I've experienced with Fitbits over the last few years is that they tend to break rather easily. Now this hasn't been a major issue for me since they've always broken within the two year warranty we have here in Europe and Fitbit has always sent me a replacement. Over the years, I've actually owned two Fitbit Charge 2s since the original one's batteries malfunctions. I own two Fitbit Charge 3s since the screen of my original Charge 3 broke. And now I own two Fitbit Charge 4s since one of my units has major issues when it comes to syncing. Now, I'm not sure if my experience is representative of the general build quality of Fitbits. So if you have any experience, please share it in the comments below. On a different note, at the moment, I'm actually testing the sleep tracking quality of different Apple Watch apps. If you have any suggestions about which apps I should test, please leave it in the comments below. In my videos, I do scientific tests on different devices like the Aura Ring, the Fitbit and the ScanWatch. And in the end, I hope to use tracking to improve my life. So if you like that subject and like this video, consider subscribing to my channel and also consider giving it a thumbs up because it makes it easier for other people to find my videos. For now, thank you so much for watching and see you in the next video.